Hi there, Jeannie. This new series is called Give Me a Break. And we are wondering, what do you do by way of having a break? Oh, well, that's, uh, let me think. Yeah, for a break, I do like to watch a good film. You know how some people like to get stuck in a book and they can read it? I'm a bit like that with a film. So I enjoy that. I haven't got hobbies like sewing or painting but I do enjoy cooking. And as a child, I like to cook, you know, make little jam tarts and things like that with my mum. So I always enjoy cooking. And sometimes I really like the challenge of a more difficult recipe as well. Do you know, they do say that the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. <laughs> and I can attest to the fact that your cooking is excellent, particularly you. your baking, Ginny. I know it's not just me, though, because I know many people in the local area are very grateful because you give them cakes, too. Yeah, I do. I really enjoy baking cakes for other people. I see it as, I was going to say, as part of my tithe. Not that it can take the place of my tithe at all, but like a an offering, shall we say, because some people don't get home baking. Now, there is nothing wrong going to a shop buying a cake, but I just like to bake, and it's nice to give people home baking at times. And I can remember when I used to go and visit a friend of mine in Cornwall, she always baked a cake if she knew I was going to visit. And it made me feel very loved and very special because she put time and effort into this. And it was always a really lovely thing to do and uh, have with a cup of coffees and catch, catch up with her. So, yeah. Was good. So may maybe you caught the flame then that ignited your passion to give people a nice edible cakes and different uh, things from from that lady who first inspired you and made you feel good about it. Yeah, for sure. And as I say, with my mum as well, as a child, loved baking. So yeah, the both. Yeah, it is nice when someone makes us a cake. I know that because I've been to different uh, churches where the, particularly the one church I remember down in Eastleigh and the lady always, every time I went, made me a cake there, which was great. I, I did enjoy it. So do you think it's a, a witness to um, the love of God to, that you give away your cakes to people? Yeah, I do. I mean, you have to be sure that people haven't got allergies and things like that to nuts and you have to be careful. And so I do write out the ingredients so people know what's in them before they eat them. And I think that it is a way of showing someone that they are thought of and cared for. So, yeah, I do do it as part of my witness for the Lord in this way. And it's something that I enjoy doing as well. It's good to spread God's love around, isn't it? For sure. Yeah. Like, um, don't, don't you spread cream on a Victoria sponge cake and a little bit of jam. Ooh, but yeah. you don't tend to make Victoria sponge cakes and things like that, do you? Not very often. I make flapjack and I like to drizzle lots of chocolate over it. And I like to make cupcakes and things like that. So, yeah, I find that and very re enjoyable. Recently, you made some Maltese at a tiffin. And I know the workmen that you gave it to who were working down the road, they really enjoyed it. Yeah, I think people really enjoy that because it was very easy to do but it looked really pretty really nice you know and it was very chocolatey and I think people really enjoyed that so that was good I'm glad they liked now, it I know also Jeannie first-hand experience that you make absolutely excellent bread and that's not easy because I have tried in the past and my efforts are pitiful but your bread is so 
nice and and it tastes better than the bread that you buy in the shops so uh, what's your secret genie follow the maker's instructions i oh, would say okay. and we have to follow god's maker's instructions don't we god's our maker we, and we have to That's follow his point. instructions in our life because he's given us his word so yeah so that's where I'm going wrong. Maybe I'll get the temperature of the bread wrong or put it somewhere. I know, don't you put it in the airing cupboard sometimes? I do because the bread likes the warmth for it to rise. It's quite funny, really, because when you make bread, you think it's doing nothing, absolutely nothing. And then you leave it for a good hour, hour and a half to rise. And it's beautiful when it has risen and you look at it and you think it's never going to do that, but it does. And I was thinking about this, Paul, because it's like our spiritual life in some ways. You know, we there we are. And then God starts dealing with things in our own life. And sometimes those things take time for us to mature. But it's really good that the lord helps us because of his love and grace and mercy in our life how we too can change just like i see that bread change as well so we're a bit like bread then we, yeah. we kind of yeah we, we're developing i guess you would say and there is a scripture that says jesus is the bread of life yes that's right he does sustain us and there were people in the Bible, I was thinking of Moses, for example. Now, Moses, uh, the Lord gave him the, a gift because he sent down the manna for his people to eat. And then you've got the feeding of the 5,000, haven't you? And the, with the two loaves and the five fishes and the Lord. Yeah, the other way around. Oh, the other way around. Five, five loaves, two five fish. Five loaves, two fish. fish. <laughs> everybody would be saying can i have a bit of your bread please for my fish that's true so <laughs> too many fish <laughs> what happened is jesus multiplied it so that the thousands had enough to eat and food over as well and then we've got the passover when jesus um took the bread and he ate it and we know that this was the time when Jesus died for our sins on the cross. So, yes. Okay. So, Jeannie, do people show sadness when you leave an area because the neighbours are so used to getting cakes and things like that? Do you think they miss you? you? Or do you think they miss your cakes? <laughs> Well, I'd like to think both, but I think they do miss the cakes, you know. And baking, as I say, is is really nice to do. And it it's fun. And it is can be hard work. Some people say, well, that's hard work for a hobby. But it's fun. I enjoy it. You could have time to do it. But it's something that I really enjoy, something practical, which I like because I'm quite a practical person. So just remind me, what's the difference between a cake and a piece of bread? Because do you remember, in, wasn't it in the French Revolution that um, the people were saying uh, that they have no bread? And what Mar Marie Antoinette was supposed to say, well, let them eat cake. And yeah. that, it's a famous saying, isn't it? Yeah. yeah and of it course, it, of course, if they hadn't got bread, they hadn't got cake. You know, it was ridiculous. But... What, the, what is the difference between bread and cake? Well, you can get yeast buns, but bread has yeast in it. And whereas a cake will have no yeast normally and will have eggs in it and margarine. Okay. So, yeah, okay. there, it's a different texture, a different type of thing. Right. Because the Bible does talk about bread without yeast, doesn't it? Unleavened bread. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and they would do that very much in Jesus's time. They didn't have all the different breads as we had. It would have been a, like a flat bread for sure. Possibly, um, I don't think it may have had yeast and it was just a flat bread, probably made with flour and olive oil and water. Yeah. Now, I know you make some really nice flat breads. I've seen you do it in the frying pan. And is that what you're talking about? 
I am actually, yeah. It's a bit like a, yeah, like a flatbread. Yeah, that's yeah. what they would yeah. have used in Jesus's time, something very yeah. similar to that. We have to remember as well that Jesus said in his prayer, give us um, our daily bread oh, for yeah. us to pray. And the Lord does sustain us, doesn't he, with bread. As I say, bread was quite significant in the Bible. And even today, bread is significant because it is one of the stable uh, diets. Mm -hmm. food so you don't mind getting all your hands all that all that dough on your hands and it sticks and you can't get it off and you go ah. you don't mind all that then when you do, when you're doing the bread you wouldn't like that Paul but I don't mind at all no no not at all no it's fun make sure you've okay. got clean hands <laughs> oh yeah that's important yeah, yeah very yeah, important yeah. to make sure how do you think in the wilderness um how would they, because they walked out of, the children of Israel walked out of Egypt with bread, yeah. you know, unleavened bread, the dough, the dough on their shoulder. How would they have cooked that, do you think? Well, they probably would have made some kind of little fire, I would have imagined, you know, with stone, um, perhaps baked it that way. Oh, but you mean put the uh, bread, the dough on the hot coal or the stone? A stone, I think, I would have thought. That's interesting to think about, isn't it? You know, how that would they actually practically go about cooking that yeast, that unleavened bread? Yeah, because they wouldn't have had ovens and things yeah. like we do today. So no, they would no have ovens. used what method they Well, they, they were on they the move could. anyway. Yeah, they, they were. were on the move, you know. Yeah, so. yeah. So I know that bread sustained them till they got to the Sinai area and... Mm -hmm. Then that's when the bread from heaven came. Yeah. The yeah, manna. Really was. Yeah. yeah, the manna. And Jesus sustained them with that bread so that they would not go hungry. Yeah. You know, the manna, it tasted a little bit like, um, didn't, doesn't it say like, like wafers or coriander seed? Um, yeah. So I wonder what was actually in that bread that came from heaven. They reckon it tasted a bit like a sweet cake so i would have thought it had some kind of spice or perhaps something in it to make it sweet and also there would have been good nutrients in it because they lasted like 40 years on that bread yeah yeah oh, they yes. did have some animals of course with them you know they could always have a and they had quail as well didn't they at some yeah. at one point yeah they did yeah they did Okay, Jeannie. Well, that's great. I'm losing my earpiece here. <laughs> so it's um so I'm looking forward to eating some of nice bread. <laughs> so great, fine. Yeah. So it's been great talking to you about what you do in your break. So thank you, Paul. Thank you, Jeannie. Thank you. Thank you.